new video for you guys today. I'm out in Port Jefferson with the DJI Air 2S and I'm gonna show you a little bit of my workflow today. I'm gonna go out, fly, get some footage, take it back to the laptop and show you how I edit my Air 2S 10-bit 5.4K videos. And of course, I've got a Autel sneaking in. These Autel guys, they, 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 they're coming in, they're coming in. But no worries, got another DJI guy over here. Vince, DJI for life, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting enough, I'm going with a seven stop filter. Yes, a seven stop filter. Now you're probably looking at this place and saying, it's not even sunny, it's, it's cloudy. That's an ND128. It's not, but there is sun coming through the clouds. So. Yeah, there's sun coming through the clouds, but still that's not considered like a really, really sunny day. So Florida in July, right? There you go. So you're probably wondering why such a strong filter? Well, first of all, these filters are no ordinary filters. Check out my video up here, this link. If you didn't see my video on Kalari filters, they are absolutely the best. It doesn't change the color of your image at all, which makes it nice and simple and easy to color grade. So I really like these filters, but the reason I went with a 128 is because as a matter of fact, don't let me explain to you. Let me show you the footage. Are you ready? Let's get flying. shooting at 30 FPS, so 30 times two is 60, so my shutter's one over 60, so I've got my 180 degree shutter rule, and my ISO is on auto. So as I turn, instead of adjusting my shutter, what it's actually going to do, look, is adjust my ISO all the way to 200. Now you're probably thinking, a high ISO is a bad thing, right? No, high ISO is actually good, all it is, it's increasing the sensitivity of the sensor and, and the more sensitive the sensor is, the more it'll actually pick up. So you don't want your ISO too high or too sensitive, but as you can see, I can go all the way around and the highest this ISO goes so far is 310. And what I love about auto ISO on this drone, which other drones like the Mini 3 doesn't have, is that it increases the ISO in little tiny increments. So you actually get more control over the ISO than you will if you're flying it and changing it manually because manually will only give you 100 then 200 then 400 then 800 it's only double whereas here it fine tunes the iso and look at that this image looks beautiful not a touch of green not a touch of green just absolutely spectacular you gotta love it Make sure that you don't go too bright by pressing the because it's going to expose for plus 1.3 you don't want to do that you don't want to go too dark because it's going to expose for minus which is too dark so make sure you set your exposure to zero minus three is not bad you could always brighten it up in the post but for today i'm shooting zero and once you set it to zero leave it to zero the camera will do everything else for you of course 5600 that's my go-to white balance for the daytime
uh, 5.4K, of course, I want the most flexibility and the best quality image. So 5.4K, 30 FPS, D-Log, of course, you need some D-Log in your life. If you need to see color, just turn the color on and you'll get some color. It's not going to bake it into the image, but it's going to show you color on the screen if you're familiar flying with color. Right, MOV MP4, that's your choice, I'm an M M MP4 guy, that's all. I went with a 128 is because this drone does not have an adjustable aperture and as a result you're not able to change your f-stop means you're not allowed to darken the image by going f.5 f.6 f.7 no you're not allowed to do that let's head to the laptop and I'll show you how I edited all this bad boy stuff yes I stopped for a haircut didn't like how my hair was looking here in the video so let's go through this footage and edit this is the takeoff and this is the first set of 5.4K D-Log footage. As you can see, I cut it into pieces for this video that I'm making for you. And I added music. See, and then it jumps. Kind of timed with the music and stuff. If you don't know how to do these things in DaVinci Resolve, check this link up here. I made a video that shows you how to do it. It's the same for every drone. However, this part of this video is specifically for the Air 2S and how I go about color grading. So let me show you. So this first piece of clip here, normally I wouldn't take that because the boat's really far away. The clouds look really nice, but there's only a little bit of island and there's a lot of water. I'm looking for a shot that has a lot of everything in it. Right, so here you can see there's boat, there's water, there's clouds, there's a lot of islands, so it's pretty busy. This is a nice shot too, but there's no boat in it, but that's a beautiful shot as well. So I'm going to go with something like this that has everything in it. Right now I'm in the edit tab at the bottom here. This is for editing. Right, see it says edit there, and then the next one is fusion. And then over here is your color. That's where you want to go. So once you've highlighted your clip, you've selected the part that you like, come over to color. Color also has these boxes. You can select the boxes to select your clip. See, you can do it here in the color tab as well and scroll through over here until you find the part that you like. So you can do that as well. But me, because I'm editing on a small screen right now, I have a bigger screen, but I just want to do a quick edit. So I have a small screen open. I'll take off the clips and leave it on the part that I like. Now, normally, if you look on the left side here of DaVinci, you have Media Pool, which will show all your videos, your drone videos, and whatever videos you imported. And then to the left of it, you have LUTs. Now, normally, I would drop a LUT on it, something like the DJI Safe LUT. That looks beautiful, <laughs> pretty much ready to go. You just hover over the image with the LUT, and that pretty much colors it for you. These are one of my DX. F stands for Drone X Factor. It's one of my LUTs. This one is a nice one too. The deep log color. This one's very rich and deep. I like it. You slap that on it. But sometimes you don't have LUTs or the LUTs you have you don't like. My LUTs will be available soon. So hang on guys. I'm almost done. But suppose you don't have LUTs and you want to color grade from scratch. Well, you take off the LUTs by clicking on the LUT and that will allow your picture to show bigger as well, right? You pull over here. This will help your picture to show as big as possible. Now these are nodes. You color and you grade on top of nodes. DaVinci automatically opens a node for you. I like to label my nodes, so I will go to node label over here and give it a no, uh, name. Now I usually put color and I'll go through multiple nodes because I'll use a node for color, I'll use a node for grading, I'll use a node for uh, changing colors in the spider web or the curves and stuff like that but we're not going that in depth today this is basic just to get you up and running so we'll use one node for now and try to 
squish all the editing into one node. If you guys want, let me know in the comment section below. I'll do a more advanced videos for you guys who already have the hang or the knack of this. Good, so you come over here at the bottom here where it says primary color wheel. Select this circle over here, that's primary, not this one. This is your HDR, this is for high dynamic range um, coloring. So we'll come over here to the primaries, which is your basic. Now this footage was shot in log. So come over to your log wheel over here and just click log. And that's basically where you want to start. Good. So I'm going to bring down my highlights a little bit so I can see more details. You see when it's the highlights are too strong, you can't see any details here, right? It's hard to see the perforation on the front of the boat over here. Now I'll bring down my highlights. Look, the, perfor the, the perforation is more visible. But if you bring down your highlights too much, look at the sky. The sky is starting to look gloomy. So you bring it up back and you kind of like looking for a nice middle ground or a sweet spot, so to say. Now this one here, your mid-tone details, you push that up. That will make like, look at the clouds. Look at the clouds, right? I'll push the details all the way up. Look at the clouds. They're like bouncing off of the screen right now. They're like really perforated. And we can bring it down. And then the clouds kind of just blend in. You see, it's not as perforated. So I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. It's the effect that you're looking for. So I'm just going to reset it. And then I'm going to turn it up. Boom, boom. Turn it up bright. There you go. That's definitely popping enough to me. That's going to hold. So my mid-tone details are at 72. So that's pretty strong. And then contrast is something you can also play with. To the same principle, you go on the word and you scroll left to bring it down. You scroll right to bring it up, left to bring it down. And then you double tap to reset. I just feel like this looks good just the way it is. So I'm not going to add any contrast. Temperature just makes you go to the left on the temperature. It makes the image bluer. You go to the right, it makes it cooler. So I'm going to turn it towards the warmer side. So I'll just warm up the temperature of the whole image. Right, just a little bit to make it look more natural, to make it look more real. Then I'll come down here and I'll start tinkering with these, my highlights, my offset, my mid-tones. Uh, my mid-tones, I like to play with those first. Kind of like change the color. Kind of like give the image a different feel or vibe. Yeah, here we'll give your mid-tones more blue. Here we'll give it more reds in your mid-tones. Here we'll give it more uh, like, you know, and here we'll give it more green. So it all depends on the vibe that you're looking for. I'm looking for something between green and blue along this line over here coming down nicely. That's the color that I'm looking for over here. My shadows are the same thing. You can play with your shadows, make your shadows more blue. Look at that image. Now that looks crazy, right? That looks like some kind of movie or something. Or you can make it more brown. You can make it more purple. You come over, you just play with these wheels a little bit. If you're not sure you made a mistake, just hit this. This will reset the shadows. This will reset the mid-tone. This will reset the highlights and this will reset the offset. And if you make a huge mistake and you mess the whole thing up, this will reset basically the whole control system that you have down there. If you hit this reset button. Good. So I'm going with my shadows. I'm looking for something different today. How about this vibe? I'm going with something more blue. Give you that Caribbean kind of effect. This gives it like a stale kind of a blue. This gives it more of a bright kind of a blue. Hmm. Shadows. How about that? That's that's a that's a really, really, that's between that green and that blue. That looks pretty good. Now at this particular point, if I'm not sure what I'm doing with my colors, you want to bump up your saturation to see how it looks when you saturate it. So I'll probably go from 50, probably somewhere around 60. 62 that's where i like my saturation i like to keep my eyes on my trees and the green in the back here once i see the green come to life i'm usually happy with that so 61 62 there you go right and then i'll come back and touch up these probably take it out a little bit i like i like the i like this color i like this blue like a rich deep green blue and i'll come to my offsets and i'll touch that up a little bit can give the image like a different vibe there we go that green bluish there you go that green bluish kind of a look there you go bump up my saturation a little bit more right and if you want like a boost you want to boost the colors a little bit like give it a little enhancements you just boost it up a little bit Ooh, there you go everything's really coming to life now 450 looks nice six boom and then i expand my image i take a look i make sure okay this is what i want nice 
color grade looks kind of different than what the camera would put out. Now I like to jump over to my HDR a little bit and just brighten up my image on a whole. That's the global, that'll brighten up your whole image, but not too much, you don't want to destroy the sky. I like a bright image, right? But that's just me, 0 0.06, not much, right? And that's it, that's it, that's pretty much, I'm done, right? Now there are more advanced tools, you can go to this, you can select the tool like the sky or something like that, I'm just gonna show you, right? So you can see what's out there. This red point shows you the color that I've selected. If I select white, you see the point goes to the middle where there's white. I select blue, the red point highlights the blue that I've selected from the sky. And I can literally change that color if I want to, something purple or something green or something. Yeah, see? Pretty nice. There's also stuff like this too that I like to mess with. Hue versus sat, pick on the sky. It shows you the black dot, raise it up. Oh, there we go. Look at that sky come to life, boy. Ooh, kind of unreal. That's like, that's different now. Look at that sky's like, ooh. This is how I color grade. I just, I just, I go for what I like, right? There you go. I like that. I'm gonna leave it right there. <laughs> and then what you do is you right click on this and you hit copy. And you come to the next image. This is the first one. This is the first, this is the first one, All right? Highlight the first image, right click on it and hit paste attributes. And when the paste attributes menu comes up, select color correction. And everything I did to the close up shot with the boat, that color correction, everything that I did, the mid tone details, the hues, the saturation, the color boost, the contrast, Everything that I did will automatically transfer over into this first image just by selecting color correction. You don't have to paste it one by one. You can highlight all these drone clips right here and just right click on them and hit paste attributes and paste it to all of them. Boom. All of them are colored now. Now, this is the lazy way to color grade. You can actually go to each one of these individually and color them yourself if you have the time or if you find that the copy and paste works great, like it looks good on each shot, knock yourself out. That's it, we got our shots. We applied it to all of our footage just by copying and pasting attributes to all of the other drone shots out there and you're done. That's my color grading workflow for today. I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure you give me a huge thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos and my LUTs will be available soon at dronexfactor.com. I'll let you know when you can head over there and buy those LUTs. With that being said, I will catch you guys, well, whenever I can. Make sure you become a Patreon, guys. Big benefits to Patreon. Get direct access to me. Any questions, I'm right here on Patreon. Support this channel and there's benefits. Last mini two went all the way to the UK.